But uh, let's get into some week five picks, man. We start off with Thursday night football. The Colts at the Broncos. Both are dealing with uh, running game issues. Both their star backs are out. Javante is out for the year. Taylor's out for the game. So what's your prediction on this one? Yeah, I'm going to go with um, Broncos 24, Colts 17. I think it's just going to depend on who has the better quarterback. And although Russ hasn't been great this year, I do think he takes a step up from what we've seen in the previous weeks. And we do know that both starting running backs won't play in this game, so I think it'll just come down to who the better quarterback is, like I said. Yeah, I agree. And when I look at it on paper, when you when, when you look at it that way, you got to go Russell Wilson. I know uh, Matty Ice is still looking solid. Although he doesn't have the targets that Russell Wilson has. And although Denver's defense has been probably the most underwhelming uh, of the entire year so far, I think they have all the tools to uh, definitely come out with a win at home here. Uh, so, yeah, get, de- definitely give me Denver. Yeah, I, f- I feel like uh, since Jonathan Taylor's not playing for the Colts, then I don't really see the Colts offense getting into rhythm whatsoever. I think Matt Ryan's at a point to where he's going to end up retiring. His targets aren't really that consistent. Their defense can only hold up so much, and I think this would be the game where that Broncos offense would start to get, although they lost Javante, I think that's when they start to get into rhythm, at least in the passing game, just a little bit. So give me Denver here. Okay, now we move on to Sunday games. We have the New York Giants at the Green Bay Packers. This is a London game, an early matchup here for early Sunday. So what's your prediction on this one? Yeah, I'm going to go with Packers 27 to Giants 17. You know, with these London games, you never really know who's going to win. But the Giants are pretty banged up right now. I'm not too sure if Daniel Jones is going to play or not. But I'm just going to go with Green Bay. Yeah, I mean, Green Bay is just the better team on paper right now. And they got a really good win last week. So, yeah, give me Green Bay. Um, With the Giants, yeah, like you said, they're banged up. Their receivers are rough right now. I mean, Green Bay is just uh, the better team at this point. So, I think A-Rod has another good game. But this isn't London, so we'll see. But, yeah, Green Bay for me. The Giants have been surprisingly good this year. Like, mm-hmm. they've exceeded my expectations, but you just can't bet against Aaron Rodgers. You can't. And although, shout out to Barkley. Heck of a career resurgence for him. It's, it's fun to watch. But he can't put the team all on his back. With that being said, though, I think I'm going to pick what? The, I think I'm a big the Giants here. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because it's in London or if it's a 930 type of game. I don't know. I just see somehow because the Giants have looked pretty impressive. I've, I've, I've been impressed by their defense. You know, Daniel Jones obviously ain't the guy, but Barkley's definitely, definitely been the guy for that offense for their running game, and he's gonna have to hold. Uh, he's gonna have to carry the offense and the Giants team in general on his back. He already has been so far. I think he's going to continue to do it. So you have the Giants in an upset. Let's let's say it like that because Green, Green Bay ain't as starstruck right with you know the receivers still aren't there you know they're still trying to get into rhythm with Aaron Rodgers and you know you you can never bet against Aaron Rodgers but for some reason I can just see the Giants pulling off a victory so give me New York here all righty but next let's get into the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Buffalo Bills the Bills are 14 point favorites that's insane as a Steelers fan how are you feeling right now yeah, I know um, this is probably not what everyone wants to hear, but I got the Bills winning 34-20. to 20. Um, I don't expect the Steelers to be able to contain the Bills' offense, especially with how bad they've looked on defense and all the injuries they have so far. Like We don't even know who's going to be playing in the secondary. Um, I think it'll be an up-and-down game for Pickett. I definitely think he'll have his flashes. Um, but I thought, like, overall last week, it was pretty good. Like, his only incompletions were those three interceptions one of them was just a hail mary in the there was the pass the friar muth and i believe the other pass the claypool which he should have caught Mm -hmm. but other than that i thought it was a pretty good game by him right uh and i'm excited for kenny pickett to get his first start here uh i don't know what to expect but i'm coming into this game a lot more excited than i did every other game this uh past season or uh, just because you know Let's see what the kids got. I mean, it's it's a rough game for him to, to have his first career start in. It's Buffalo. But, yeah, I got to go Buffalo as well. I mean, we're just trying to be realistic here. The Steelers could pull off an upset. It just seems like one of those games where somehow, some way, the Steelers pull it off. But as long as T.J. Watt is out, I don't know how much longer that defense can stand strong. Uh, so, yeah, give me Buffalo. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think the Steelers continue their losing streak without having T.J. Watt on the team. Yeah. Or not playing, so... 
it, it's just hard to bet against Buffalo. You know, the Steelers, I do think they will remain competitive with Kenny Pickett in there, and the defense tried to do as much as they can. But against this starstruck Buffalo Bills team, it, it's really hard to hold them down. So give me Buffalo here. Right. Yeah, and I, I saw a stat on Twitter. The Steelers have yet to win a game without T.J. Watt playing. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I think if, 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 if the exact record is... Correct. I believe it's 0-7. Yeah, that's what I think I saw, too. Yeah, I mean, that's bad. It's rough. And that goes to show you how impactful TJ really is, man. Yep. I don't know. We might be going to 0-8. We might be uh, 1-7 before the bye, honestly, looking at it. But Kenny Pickett's getting his first start, so I think we're all excited. But well, we shall see what this team does. Next game, we have the Los Angeles Chargers at the Cleveland Browns. The Browns just lost to the Falcons, and the Falcons didn't really do anything in that game statistically. Uh, so what's your what's your prediction in this one? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Chargers over the Browns in this game. I think it's going to be hard to stop the Browns' run game, but I expect the Chargers' passing game uh, to do just enough to get the win, so I'm going to go with the Chargers here. Yeah, agreed. I got to go L.A. I mean, Herbert might be a little bit more healthy after the little injury, but, yeah, give me L.A. I just Cleveland has its sparks on offense. They're obviously going to rely a lot on the run, and that's one thing with the Chargers that's still very iffy is a rushing attack, which is why this game might be uh, a lot closer than many anticipate. But I'm still going to give it to L.A. Although it's 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 really hard to trust L.A., the Chargers. I know. Because every time I, I, I sense some sort of trust with them, they just pull a Chargers. And this could be another one of those games, but I'm still going to stick with them. Yeah, I mean, I think in the end, Chargers will pull, pull out a victory. This game, I do think, will be a lot closer than, than I think a lot of people are going to be thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the running games for both teams are going to be top-notch. The passing game, you know, I mean, Justin Herbert's Justin Herbert. Jacoby Brissett, he's been a very serviceable quarterback throughout the past four weeks, but I think the Chargers defense finally does something and tries to get some turnovers, tries to get some sacks, and limits the Browns' offense and limits the running game, and I think the Chargers get the victory here on the road. Right. This could be an even matchup, though, so it should be a fun game to watch. Um, one that may be fun is a uh, NFC North rivalry matchup is the Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings. What's your prediction on this one? Yeah, I'm going to go Vikings 27 to Bears 17. The Bears are just not a good football team, and I expect the Vikings to thrive at home. Agreed. I just don't know what the Bears. Their offense is so bad. I mean, what is what is Justin Fields' uh, passing yards per game average? Isn't it like 120 or something? Maybe a little higher than that? It's rough. It's bad. Um, yeah, Minnesota f- for me as well. Yeah, I mean, Enough I, said. I, I, don't, I don't trust the Bears. I, I, I mean, they, they hardly have any weapons. They have talent, but they're not consistent. I mean. They are legit in a rebuild. Y- yeah. I Again. Mean, that's what they're going to need to be in, you know. To, to benefit Justin Fields' career and the Bears franchise down the road. But give me Minnesota here. I just don't see the Bears really putting up too much of a fight. No. Uh, one team that is putting up a lot of fight, their record may not show it, but the points on the board sure do, is uh, Detroit, man. They 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 go to New or- uh, New England to uh, face the Patriots, the Lions, the Patriots. So what's your prediction on this one? Yeah, I'm actually going with a Lions win here. I'm going to go Lions 27, Patriots 24. Mm. Um, I know this might be an upset to some people, but I don't think it is. Like, I know that the Lions' defense hasn't been too great, but the Patriots' offense is by no means elite. And I think the Lions have a strong run game going for them right now, and I think that'll carry them to victory. Agreed. And I don't know if Hoyer's going to be playing this one. If not, I would imagine Bailey Zappi, the rookie, will be uh, getting his first career start, if that's the case. He looked decent in uh, when he had to come in for Hoyer last week, but... It's Detroit. I mean, their defense has been terrible. It, it's been the reason why they, their record is, is as it is, but their offense is showing that they can definitely put points on the board and have fight, even with Jared Goff leading the way. So It's arguably the number one scoring offense. As a matter of fact, I think it actually is ranked number one right now. Is it really? Yes, but their defense is 32nd. That explains a lot. So, but nonetheless, give me Detroit. Yeah, I mean, I think the Patriots can keep up a fight, you know, because I because you know Matt Patricia is the I think he's a play caller for the Patriots offense, so he's familiar. Obviously. Matt Patricia? Yeah, I thought he'd be the defensive coordinator. No, 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 no. He's the offensive play caller for the, the Patriots. Matt Patricia, the former defensive coordinator and Lions head coach. Yes, is an offensive play caller. Yes, that explains why the Patriots offense is 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 bad. It's not good. Nonetheless, I don't even think Matt Patricia, since he knows the Lions, I don't think he's even going to help. This is a different Lions team. Exactly. You know, the Lions are definitely 
uh, a team to that, that that's growing and to definitely keep an eye on. Give me Detroit. Wow. I did not know about that, but there you have it there. Next game, we have the Seattle Seahawks at the New Orleans Saints. I don't know if Winston's going to be playing in this one, uh, but what's your prediction on this one? Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game. I got Saints 23, Seahawks 20. Um, I like the Saints defense a little more than the Seahawks defense, and I expect them to be able to put up just enough points to win. Yeah, I mean, I got to go New Orleans as well. This was tough for me. I almost wanted to side with, C- with Seattle because somehow, some way, Geno Smith's actually looking pretty decent. Uh, they had a hell of a game last week versus the Lions where they actually pulled it off. Um, what was the final score, 48-45 or something like that? So yeah. I could see them doing something similar uh, against New Orleans, but their defense is much better than the Lions, clearly. Um, New Orleans kept them in last week when they uh, went to London to face Minnesota, but obviously Minnesota came back. So New Orleans is, is returning home, and I'm sure they're going to want to try to get a dub here. And against Seattle, I mean, it's, it's a good opponent to do so. But I, I, I do agree with you. It's going to be closer. Uh, it's going to be re- it's, it's going to be a really close game, but still give me New Orleans here. Yeah, I don't know if Winston's playing. I don't know if Michael Thomas is playing. I don't know if Kamara's playing because all of them were out last week. If they get Michael Thomas back, that's going to be a big add, regardless who's that quarterback. Oh, yeah, no I doubt. I know Olave is, is having a really good rookie year. Uh, so and Jarvis Landry's in there. He's a handy guy as well. Right. So I mean, it's going to open the offense if he does play. And even when they had those guys out last week, you know, they still kept it close against Minneapolis. And I think in this game against Seattle, to which I don't think their defense is as good as Minneapolis. I, I think even if Winston and, the, and and other guys don't play, I think they still get a win though. Right. I think New Orleans gets a victory here at home. Next game, we have another rivalry matchup. This is going to the AFC East. We have the Miami Dolphins, where Tua is officially out. Teddy Bridgewater will be getting the start. At the New York Jets, who just beat the Steelers. So what's your prediction here? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Dolphins over the Jets. Um, I don't think the Dolphins should have an issue putting up points, even with Bridgewater at quarterback. They got one of the best wide receiver duos in Hill and Waddle. So those are those guys are obviously going to get open and make plays. I think it's just a matter of what the Dolphins' defense can do against a banged-up Jets offense, but I got the Dolphins winning this game. Agreed. I almost sided with the Jets, I'm not going to lie, but Miami is just too good on offense and on defense for me to bet against them right now. So I'm still going to go Miami even though Bridgewater's starting. We've seen that he can still toss the ball to Tyree Kill. I wish he would have tossed the ball a little more to uh Jalen Waddle because my uh, my super boost on FanDuel last week really depended on it, and I was one yard short of uh, winning it. So thank you, Bridgewater, for not looking Waddle's way. But nonetheless, he still has offensive power to uh, to definitely get the job done. And against uh, a New York Jets defense, it should be a fun matchup here. Um, but, yeah, give me Miami. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, Bridgewater, you know, he's a serviceable guy. He showcased that the previous years with the previous teams he was with, like New Orleans and Carolina. And I feel like, you know, with the weapons that are around him, you know, I, I, I think I think Miami can still be a dangerous team, can be a very good offense, even with Bridgewater in. I actually see them using a lot of the rotational ground game. Oh, yeah, definitely. In this one. Definitely, no doubt. I mean, I, don't underestimate the Jets because they do have talent. I think they are a growing t- team slowly but surely. But Miami is just a better team overall, even with Bridgewater in at quarterback. So I got the Dolphins here. Next game, Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Bucks. What's your prediction on this one? I got the Bucks twenty-eight to the Falcons seventeen. I think the Falcons, or uh, I know that they're pretty banged up right now. Mariota hasn't looked terrible, but he's definitely not a long-term solution at quarterback. And the Buccaneers should get a convincing win here, especially after a loss coming last week. Yeah, I mean, I think Tampa Bay's lost two straight now. Yep. So returning home, they got to get a dub here, and against the Falcons, it's a, it's a Favorable matchup for him, so Tampa Bay for sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Atlanta stands a chance, especially since Cordell Patterson is going to be on IR for the next Correct. four weeks. Plus, I heard Kyle Pitts is uh, on the injury report as well. And what has Drake London done anyway? Has he done anything? He's done solid. Okay, even with Mariota at quarterback. Yes. Okay, well, that doesn't surprise me. Drake London's a hell of a receiver, and I think he will be down the road. But give me Tampa Bay here. Tampa Bay's going to left some steam here back at home. So Totally. Yeah. Next game, the Tennessee Titans at the Washington Commanders. What's your prediction? I actually got the Commanders over the Titans for this game. I just think the Titans lack in the passing game, and the Commanders' defense should be able to limit Henry enough and put up enough points on offense to get the win. Interesting. Uh, that could be an upset for sure. Um, I'm going to go with Tennessee, though. I think they definitely 
as they are going to have to all season, rely on uh, Derrick Henry. Mm -hmm. See, with Washington's defense, they clearly have the talent. It's stacked amongst almost every position. It's just they're not executing. And, and, the, and the, you, you figure with a defensive-minded head coach and Ron Rivera, you know, they, they'd be striking like they did that one year. Right. But, I mean, um, with Washington, the past couple weeks with, with, with Wentz and their offensive line, seeing what Tennessee can do, I mean, I, I'm just going to go with Tennessee. Although, it wouldn't surprise me if Washington pulls this off at home, but give me Tennessee. Yeah, I, I I just don't trust Carson Wentz with the commanders. I mean, he had a decent start, but he's lacked, and the offensive I'll, line's not protecting him I'll, well I'll, enough. I'll say this, though. Tennessee's defense is very bad. And seeing what McLaurin can do, obviously, John Dotson's having a good start to his rookie year. Yeah. They got weapons. Uh, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick's stepping up in the ground game. I think we're getting Brian Robinson uh, back at some point. So, yeah, I mean, Washington could pull this off. They definitely could. I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely out there that they could. You know, they have the talent. They have the possibility to do it, especially since it's at home. It's just, I don't know. Tennessee's I feel- also one of those teams where just like they're like, eh. I know. I know. Like, this year they're not as, you know, starstruck or a fiery offense like they used to be in previous years. And it just goes to show the trade of A.J. Brown to Philly is right. hurting them. And Traylon Burks just got hurt with a turf toe, and he's going to be out for some time. So. And, of course, Tannehill's hit, uh, just – Coming towards the end of his uh, starting career, so, yeah, honestly. Yeah, they're going to rely a lot on Derrick Henry, as they always have, but ever more so now than ever. Mm-hmm. But I think even with that, you know, I think Tennessee can still pull out a victory with, you know, Henry carrying him on his back. Yeah. Next game, we have the Houston Texans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. What's your prediction? I'm going to go Jaguars 24 to Texans 17. Uh, Lawrence has looked pretty good this year. And they've got a good run game going over there at Jacksonville, so I think they're going to surprise a lot of people Agreed. this year. And I got them winning this game against the Texans. Agreed. I, I'm actually very uh, impressed and almost convinced with Jacksonville's rise here. Uh, Peterson's done well. Like you said, Lawrence has done very, very good uh, to start his second year. So, And, 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 the, and the targets have stepped up, even the guys that they overpaid for. The ground game's looking good, like you said. So, yeah, I, I like Jacksonville's matchup here. I mean, te- Texans... Yeah, Jacksonville was one of those teams where I thought it was going to take maybe another year or two. But they look pretty promising so far this year. Yeah, and you can see that the culture change is just being fed off through everybody. And it's it's showing on the football field. So, good for Jacksonville. And I think they get the win as well. Yeah, Jacksonville's looks extremely impressive. D- Doug Peterson's definitely changing, you know, the environment and the culture there. That which... Urban Meyer last year tried to destroy or basically did because his coaching style was not working clearly. Right. And bringing in Doug Peterson has done wonders for them already in his first season. And Trevor Lawrence has looked real solid. Their running game is is real good. With James Robinson and Travis Etienne, the receivers are actually, you know, worth the contracts uh-huh. that they that they gave them and everything. Their defense has actually been looking real good, especially with the defensive rookies they got on the front seven. Mm-hmm. Houston, it's I mean, it's Damian, it's Damian Pierce show basically. Yeah, that's re- really what it is. Davis Mills is not uh, uh, the quarterback for the future for them whatsoever. So give me Jacksonville here. Yeah, agreed. Next game, San Francisco at the Carolina Panthers. What's your prediction? I got the 49ers winning. 49ers winning twenty seven to seventeen. Uh, Baker Mayfield just hasn't looked good at all this year, and I think the whole offense is going to continue to struggle against a good 49ers defense. Agreed. And a, a good 49ers defense that allowed zero touchdowns to Cooper Cup and Matt Stafford. So that's impressive. And I think their defensive line is going to eat. I know Nick Bosa is leading the league in sacks right now by half a sack. Behind him is Alex Highsmith, so shout out to him. But, uh, yeah, this is my lock of the week. I don't believe in Carolina. I don't trust anything that they're doing. They suck right now. Yeah. They have a few guys, but that's it. They're just they're just bad. The, the the head coach is bad. The quarterback situation's a joke. Give me San Francisco in my uh in my lock of the week. Yeah, seriously. Like they could bench Baker, but then you're gonna have to go back to Sam Darnold. He's and, on IR though. Oh, that's right, he is. And no. the only reason I know that is because he's on my team in the sleeper league. So they got him and Matt Corral on IR. So yeah, they are screwed. And Matt Rules are head coach. Yeah, San Francisco <laughs> by a long shot. Yeah, no doubt. Enough said. Next game, we have the Dallas Cowboys. At the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams just lost in a primetime matchup. Dallas is looking good with Cooper Rush. What's your prediction? 
Yeah, I'm actually going with the Rams over the Cowboys here. I think if you're the Rams coming off a disappointing loss, you got to be fired up for a win. And it seems like they have not yet to put it all together. But I think this is the game where they put everything together and it's things have got to turn around for them eventually. I would think so too. I mean, they have too much talent to, you know, just keep on their performing so far and have a, a Super Bowl hangover, which is really dragging for them. However, I'm going to go upset. Upset of the week here. I'm going to go Dallas. Cooper Cooper Rush is undefeated so far as a starter and 3-0 and this year, stepping in for Dak. And I, I, believe me, I, I can't see Los Angeles losing at home to Dallas and having, what, two straight losses here? Mm-hmm. I just can't see it. But I'm going to go upset of the week here. Give me Dallas. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. Give me Dallas here. Cooper Rush has looked real solid. I'm actually surprised that they've won three straight games. I didn't think it was ever going to happen. And here here we are talking about the 3-1 and Dallas Cowboys potentially pulling an upset against the Los Angeles Rams. And their defense has been a big key part of their success, of their winning streak yes, so it far. Has. Yes, it has. And the thing with the Rams offense, I don't know what it is, but they've turned over the ball a lot more than they should have. Yeah, Matt Stafford's touchdown interception ratio is not good. And they can't get a running game going. Not with Cam Makers, not with Henderson. They can't get anything going outside of Cooper Cooper. Cup. I'm going to say Cooper Rush. Cooper Cup. Right. That's it. The battle of the Coops is this game, man. That, that's exactly what it is. Both Coopers are going to have to stand out for this one. But give me Dallas here. I think Dallas can pull off the upset. Okay. Next yeah, game. Yeah, Allen Robinson has been extremely disappointing this year. Yeah. What has happened to Allen Robinson? I drafted him pretty early in our redraft league thinking he was going to be good, but he's done absolutely nothing for me. He has been so quiet. He's been dead in the water, man. Like, what has happened to him? Like we were, th- we were thinking, uh, oh, he's finally with a good quarterback, the best quarterback he's had his entire career, and honestly, it's not looking that way right now. Like I was thinking the same thing about DJ Moore because I drafted him pretty early too, but that hasn't panned out at all either. Wow, that's rough. Ooh, that's rough. I don't know, man. They gotta get, uh, they gotta get Allen Robinson going. Matt Stafford needs to start yeah. looking his way, or. I don't know if Robin need Robinson needs to uh, step up his game or what, but you got. Cup and Robinson on each side. I mean, the offense should be striving. So maybe, maybe this is the game they start kicking it up a bit. I mean, one's going up against Javon Diggs, so yeah. Well, Diggs has looked solid actually this this year. And it's, 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 there's going to come a game where he's going to budge and right. let out a lot of yards. It's You're probably right. going to be this one. Right. We'll see though. Anyway, uh, next game we have the game of the birds here. We have the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. Man, this should be a pretty interesting offensive showdown. At least that's what you would think, but then again, it's Arizona. So what's your prediction? I actually think this is going to be the closest game of the week. This was pretty hard for me to predict, but I'm going to go with the Eagles over the Cardinals. Um, I think if the Cardinals can get their run game going, they might have a better chance, but for now I'm going to roll with the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to not roll with the Eagles. They're looking very good right now. Hertz is really on the verge of looking legit if he isn't already. I mean, the receiving core is great. They, they're actually getting a ground game going with Miles Sanders every now and then. We know Hurts can use his legs. The defense has stepped up. So, until proven otherwise, I don't see myself betting against Philadelphia. So, yeah, give me Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, this is on the road. This is against Arizona. Both these teams do have a lot of, you know, brutal history as they were once rivals way back in the day. Mm-hmm. But This I was do- also an NFC Championship game once. Yes. For the 2008 championship game? Yes, it was, yeah, where Arizona won. Yeah, and we, we knew what happened in Super Bowl 43. But Arizona, I think they keep it close. I do think they remain competitive, but Philly's just on a hot streak right now. They're the only undefeated team in the NFL currently. Mm-hmm. I think they keep it going. Jalen Hurts is looking fantastic. The running game is getting going finally with Miles Sanders. The receivers are literally out of this world. Right. Their defense, I mean, the additions that they've done in the offseason, they're, they're paying off big time. So give me Philly here. Sunday Night Football, we have an AFC North showdown. We have the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. This should be a very good one, even though, you know, they're rivals in the in AFC North. I'm looking forward to this game. So what's your prediction? Yeah, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I got the Ravens winning 35-27. to 27. Mm. Uh, I think the Ravens are going to end up winning the North this year, and I expect Jackson to have a huge game here. And I'm going to be honest, Lamar Jackson, he's my MVP so far. Like, he's looked mm. real good this year. Honestly, I don't I don't blame you for that thought. And I see why you say that. Lamar Jackson has really put the Ravens on his back and is looking probably the best he has in his entire career. And 
Honestly, it's it's a better, it's a faster start than his MVP year. Yes, it was. So props to Lamar Jackson, honestly. And Cincinnati, they're they're starting to get some wins back. They're they're still a ha- I believe they still have a losing record, so they can't really afford another loss here. Otherwise, you know, they're gonna continue on that losing record early on to into the season. But um, I gotta go Baltimore now. I don't trust that defense, and we know Cincinnati has a high powered uh, air attack offense. So this very well could be a very fun shootout on Sunday night, but I'm still gonna go Baltimore. Okay, it's at home. Lamar's looking great. Uh, J.K.'s getting involved now. Uh, at least I hope he continues to get involved for fantasy reasons. Yeah, I mean the 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 receivers are stepping up. So I mean this could very well be a nice offensive showdown. Yeah, I definitely think this has all the makings to be a shootout. I mean the Bengals receiving core speaks for itself. The the Ravens receiving core obviously ain't as impactful, but you got guys that are stepping up, that mm-hmm. are growing, and Lamar's looking fantastic. Joe Joe Burrow had a rough start, but he's star, starting to finally come into, you know, who Joe Bur- Joe Burrow really is. Right. Both running games, you know, are real good. Defenses are, you know, they, they do their part, but the, the offenses are what really sticks out for both these teams. So this definitely has – all the makings to be a impressive and an incredible shootout for Sunday Night Football. But I think Baltimore does get the win here at home and beat Cincinnati. So you have uh, you got Baltimore. Yes. Okay. Now, to close out Week 5 picks, man, we have another rivalry matchup. A very good one from the AFC West, I believe. It's the Las Vegas Raiders, who I believe, didn't they just get their first win last week? Yes. They did. Holy hell. They're 1-3, but they got their first win last week. They're facing the Kansas City Chiefs, who... Last week, man, you know, they don't, they don't have Tyreek Hill no more, obviously. They don't have the offensive star power in terms of uh, the receiving ability. But they put up 40 on the on the, on the the Bucks. So Kansas City's still looking hot. So what's your prediction in this one? Yeah, I'm expecting another high-scoring game here. I got Chiefs winning 33-28. to 28. Um, I think they end up doing just enough for the win, and I think Mahomes has another huge day like last week. Ag- agreed. And, you know, he's always had a great history versus the uh, – the Raiders, and with the Raiders, you know, they got a good win last week. They got the first win. I think that uh, that that parade's going to, you know, be very uh, short-lived because, I mean, I still don't trust Vegas. They had a great offseason, but their head coach is the wrong guy to go with. They're facing Kansas City. It's a rivalry matchup, so it might be a little closer than anticipated, but right. I'm still going Kansas City. You know, there's been times where the Raiders have had, you know, the Chiefs number and Mahomes number and gotten one against them, but – for, for this time around, you know, although the Chiefs lost some guys, you know, they, they, they it goes to show that they don't need them, that they're still a high-powered team in general. And the Raiders, I mean, they got the talent, but they're, they're, they're just lacking right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's, I, it's hard for me to see the Raiders get a second straight win against Kansas City, who's looking fantastic. So, and it's prime time in, 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 in Arrowhead, I mean. Yeah, I, I do think the game can be close, but – Give me Kansas City. Right. Anyway, guys, that is our week five picks. Again, huge shout out, huge thank you to Alex D. Stay black and go from Discord chat for his time and for his predictions, man. Glad to have you on the channel again, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a good time. Absolutely, man. And of course, you're welcome next year. As uh, good luck to you in the uh, Cam Hayward jersey giveaway since you are now officially entered for joining us for weekly predictions. Otherwise, uh, you may join us for the outro. So, Rob, sign us out. Like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you later. Peace!